now you're getting a little bit ahead of the curve here. We're showing yeah. you what's coming out next year. Right? Okay. <laughs> We do a lot of R&D here. This is this is one of the systems that we're working on. It has a pressure switch okay. that is connected to our backwash pump. Okay. So once the pressure underneath the bead bed reaches a, a certain limit that we set, mm -hmm. we automatically initiate a backwash. Oh, okay. So mm. in parallel to that, we have this data logger. So whenever it backwashes, it records the voltage coming from the pump okay. so we can determine how many times the backwash and determine okay. an interval based on that. Okay. This takes away the responsibility to for you to set the air delivery rate on a poly geyser for backwash. I see. Instead of guessing, it's actually measuring the pressure and deciding when to backwash. When to do it. Okay. This is relatively straightforward project putting in the pressure sensor. Mm -hmm. What we're really interested in is how that pressure drop relates to performance. So okay. we're, we're not really perfecting how to do it with a pressure sensor. We're trying to look at what the biological implications here. That is, what is the best back pressure for a given application. I see. I see. Yeah, so we do a lot of a lot of this work and we work on this stuff. The ideas we're working on now mm -hmm. But we we're just writing another grant upstairs that will probably come out with product in you know, two years from now. So we're thinking about, and we've been working on that concept for two or three years before that. So wow. we're trying to get to market is quite a lot. It's, of yeah, a lot of I see. So when did, when did you start working on this? Or when did this when did this concept begin? This is this the design. first one? Yeah, is this the this first is a very common design that we use. Okay. Right? It's uh, used for small laboratory work. Okay. The uh, charge chamber and the triggers and everything are made out of standard PVC pipes. Okay. And um, it allows us to slap together a very small unit mm -hmm. to test beads on, for mm -hmm. example. Mm -hmm. And um, and basically then we can do several of them at a time if we need to. Okay, I see. This, this is interesting. interesting. This is you can see here it's, it's rubber coupled here. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that we can take it apart to change the beads or to access the middle. Okay. And then we have this clear acrylic. We can change the height of this unit to shorten it to okay. different studies. And does that matter? The height of this would that have would that be a difference? Absolutely. When okay. you do a poly geyser, and this is an operational poly geyser, this pipe here is where the air comes out from the charge chamber. Okay. And these were originally called drop filters when we first started, because when this air comes up, we're going to take all that dirty water and put it down here. Mm -hmm. So the beads are going to drop. Okay. The drop is the air is going through and mixing the beads up. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's they used to be called drop drop. Filters. So okay. the ratio of this to that to the amount of air is very critical to operation. Ah, uh, okay. Wow. Okay. Now this part here is this the part that? Um, let me see. What is this? Yeah, the pump's attached to there. Oh, okay. The pump is attached to this. Okay. So we're, we're we're pulling in through here. Through here. Okay. Coming, going up there and then coming back. back. Okay. I see yeah. now. I see. So but now this system is a little bit cloudy. Which feed are you on here? You're the this shrimp, this shrimp feed. And I've been I've been loading this system up with a lot more food than I would normally. Okay. Because I'm trying to get the system to clog up, so we can we can reach that pressure that we're trying to mm -hmm. get, so we can try and find that optimal that optimal operating pressure. I see. But but also shrimp are narrowly raised in water that's more opaque. Than okay. The, 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 Fish are. Uh, in fact, they in some cases they raise them with no filter whatsoever. They, so it looks like a almost like a septic tank. I mean, a sewage okay. system with all the flocking. All this, okay. And they they actually eat that bacteria that grows. Oh, okay. They eat that. Okay. They're, they're always crazy. So this is okay. but this is mainly effect of the feed. Some of these systems look similar to that over here mm -hmm. until we change the feed. We got a feed that was designed for what we call an RAS or tanks, okay. as opposed to what's raised designed for pond. I see. So you always be careful what feed you put into a small system so it doesn't have some secondary effects. Okay. Like that, you know, a color change. Like okay. The color, different coloration. Okay. I see. And that ammonia nitrite in there is near zero. So it's near zero in here. Okay. Yeah, so that's not an issue with this. It's just the color. Okay. And then um, what dissolved oxygen um, level do these, do these shrimp require? They're actually not very sensitive to that. They can tolerate down around two milligrams per liter, no problem. Okay. Mm -hmm. A lower, you know, for short duration. So short duration. Uh, we, of course, try to keep them around five. About five is no issue, but it's really, for them, it's not an issue. In fact, uh, ammonia nitrite for shrimp is not very critical. Oh, is that right? Yeah, it's okay. Not, it's not like it is with fish, where they might die of one or two parts per mm -hmm. 
we had an episode here uh, in, in startup where we had over 100 milligrams per liter of nitrite. 100 milligrams per liter? Yeah, that's nitrite, not nitrate. nitrate right, nitrite. Right. And they're sort of, they don't care. That is and amazing. I think for ammonia, they're, we start to worry about about 20 milligrams per liter. Yeah, that's it's extremely so high. It's totally yeah. different. Of course, fish. they come out of a swamp environment, mm -hmm. I mean, a marsh environment where they're in association with decaying muds all okay. the time. Okay. And they're, they're estuarine fish, so they're, I mean, animals, so they're used to that ammonia coming and going with it as the oxygen comes and goes. Okay, so they're adapted. Yeah, so they're, they're fairly easy. They're more in a class of tilapia than they are anything else in terms of rearing. I see how hardy they are. I see. I didn't know that. They were so hardy. And yeah. they can be raised down to about three parts per thousand, which is almost fresh water. So mm. uh, they're not strictly mm. salt. They, okay. they, 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 they can be conditioned to go raise a very low salinity. Pretty much down there, yeah, low salinity. Yeah, that's and one's just as tough as tilapia for aquaponic. And all this is up here? What is? These are just all different type of... So we run a, a uh, basically a water quality laboratory right here. It's already closed up, but we measure our own ammonia, nitrite, BOD. Suspended solids, mm -hmm. and you saw our yep, earlier there. Mm -hmm. counts, mm -hmm. and we all we follow EPA published regulations. Okay, so we can <coughs> pretty much document in any fish system or any wastewater system. That we need to. Okay, our, our students are from LSU here. Most of them had classes and were trained in how to run them. Perfect, That's smooth. So we can keep in here for a week. Yeah, I know. I can be in here for a week too. I like this. Is interesting stuff. Catch a shrimp. Yeah. Yeah. Go catch a yeah, shrimp for us. Catch them up. Woo. I have to have the beef. Put a couple of my barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> Put a couple. This guy's going to learn to stop swimming off top. <laughs> you know what? We'll go for it. Get your behind over here. Let's go. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, <laughs> hey. All right. Process of elimination. All right. Come on out. Okay. Put up a little fight. Yeah. The little one you got. Yeah. Wow. Amazing, man. Yeah, we how, many, right how many months is, it, that, is this for her? This is about 11 months old. 11 months? Yeah. yeah. 11 months old, okay. We yeah, had a batch of five month old ones and they really tasted just fine. They're perfect. Yeah. They were yeah. Like no problem at all. Amazing. Now, you don't, uh, a lot of people don't understand it, but I believe over half the shrimp that are consumed in the United States now are raised in either ponds or tanks. Okay. Okay. And so, you know, that's their, over half of our farm, mm -hmm. which we've been talking a while now. Okay. And so what we're doing in our projects is we're trying to help out the Midwestern farmers who don't have any ocean, mm -hmm. right? Their mm -hmm. prices for shrimp are very, very high mm -hmm. for shrimp. And they've been trying to farm them as an additional product for, on their farm, right? And they've been having problems. So we got a grant from the a small business innovative research grant from the USDA to come up with techniques and designs that are more stable and they would do that. And that total grant, with the time we get done with it, will be over $600,000. Wow.